Hello everyone, Flaming Footy here, and welcome or welcome back to another video on the channel. And today, guys, we are going to be continuing our big match reviews. So in today's video, we are going to be going over our big match review. We're going to be covering every game from round number four in a quick review. Now, if you haven't watched the three game match series, match review series, where I do three games, so the first three games, second lot of three games, and third three games, please go ahead and do so. If you want to see more about your team, but if you're just interested in the short little snippets of the reviews that I do, that's also fine. Uh, and if you like them both, that's also very good. Now, uh, round four was a very interesting round to say the least. So we're going to go ahead and just not waste any time and let's just go ahead and hop right into it. Spend about 40 seconds on each game. So let's go ahead and hop right into things. So, as I said, um, this game, if you saw the match, the three-game match review that I did on this game, this game was quite a boring contest. It was probably one of the most boring 32-point wins I've ever seen. Now, good job to put Adelaide for holding Melbourne to 68 because they could have definitely been unleashed. Now, I actually said Melbourne by 31, so I was pretty close in this in this one. The uh, Power, they, they probably could have won this game 4-12. If they were a little bit more accurate, they definitely could have competed a little bit more. Um... But it just was not meant to be for the power one eight at one stage. You can see there, they got three goals in the last turn. But that staircase right there, that's where Melbourne won the game. If they hadn't kicked them goals, it would have been pretty even the entire the entire game. And Port Adelaide could have maybe snared and beat them in what would have been a very low scoring game. And it was still very low scoring. But in the end, like look at how long the power held the D's for. Like they held them here for a long, long, long time. And it was just that thing that just got it out of control. And then the game pretty much stayed the way it was for the rest of the contest with the Demons getting a few more goals and the power getting the goals late. Uh, they were held to no goals before half time. Here were the stat leaders. Uh, but unfortunately enough for the power, they go 0 and 4 in the D's. On the other hand, they go 4 0. So the Lions and the Cats add another chapter to their exciting rivalry they currently have right now. Because it is a rivalry definitely building between these two teams. They have a very good rivalry going. And the Cats take this one out by 10 points to GMHBA. 11-14-80 to 11-4-70. So the Lions, very accurate. The Cats, more inaccurate. Uh, now this game was very exciting, very close. Uh, especially for the first probably half. It was still very close for the whole thing though. But the Cats, they did get out to a little bit of a snap lead after half time. The Cats, they did have, uh, con they controlled the majority of this game. They were never up by too much. It was pretty much like around here. You can see just goal for goal for goal. And it was really exciting. Teams were scoring quickly. Um, Lions managed to get a few in a row there to bring it back. And it was a really close and exciting contest the whole way through. Um, look, uh, 30, 30 disposals for Neil. He does do it every time. And you can see there, there are some of the other stat leaders. But yeah, really exciting game. These two rivals, some very good ones here. Now, first game on the Saturday. The Roos did a fantastic job to almost beat the Swans at home. Sydney, 13-8-86 to North Melbourne, 12 3 75. Now, this game was really interesting. I feel like uh, North Melbourne were definitely controlling the tempo at some big stages here and here and here um, and here. So they started the game off really well with a goal. Uh, they got up by about three goals here, uh, and then by, again, two goals, two goals. So it was a really exciting contest, um, and this game was won by Sydney. They were they were the better team on the afternoon, but I'm going to say fantastic effort to North Melbourne. They really tried. They really did a good job, and I feel like this this could be, maybe not the start of something, but this could start something for the Roos. They could be on a roll here. This could be the start of something. Got the dogs, and that they could beat the dogs realistically. But overall, a good game for North, but Sydney just got the job done. Now, on to Collingwood versus West Coast. Collingwood 10 14 74, uh, West Coast 14 387. So now Brody Mycheck did take two good marks in the mark here, so he's in there twice for the nominees. Um, and West Coast, they get the job done, winning 74 to 87. Collingwood were inaccurate, but West Coast just a better team on the day. They did lead this game for a fair bit, they, more than Collingwood, so they probably did deserve to win it. But look, I'd say that's a massive shock for the Pies. I feel like I feel like they should have won this game. Like there were stages where they should have that they were inaccurate. Look, they had been a little bit more accurate. They should have won this game. They should have taken it out. I I have no reason why they shouldn't have. West Coast were missing half of their side, but on West Coast on West Coast page, congratulations, West Coast. You did a fantastic job. You played well and you beat the Pies. Um, and yeah, they just did a very good job. The Eagles. We're just a better team on the day. And here are some stats. Uh, we'll change it up so you can see the multiple goal kickers. But, yeah, it was a good game for West Coast, and they have their first win of 2022. 
So on the first Saturday night, 6.55 game, Richmond 15.999 defeat the Bulldogs 7.9 and 61. Now, you just heard what was the problem for the Dogs. Their inaccuracy two weeks in a row. It it did help them last week get over the Swans, but this week it haunted them. And I was like, I'm waiting for the inaccuracy to haunt the Dogs because it was going to have to one day, and this was their time. So I Bolton kicked an absolute ripping goal of the year contender. I feel like that's goal of the year. Uh, but yeah, the Dogs, they just were not good enough. The, the amount of behinds they kicked, Probably cost them the game. They could have won this game had have they not had have they not kicked so many behinds. And the Tigers, they were good. They were in front for pretty much the whole contest. There was a few moments where the dogs were in front, but the Tigers, they just owned this contest a lot, and they were just better than the Bulldogs. You can see that there are some stats, but yeah, it was really good for the for the the Tigers, showing that they can play finals. They want to play finals for the Dogs. North could beat them. That they, they really could. Now on to Fremantle versus GWS. Now this one was going to be one to keep an eye out on Fremantle. 13 10 88 defeat GWS 8 6 54. Now for the Giants, very low scoring for them. They managed the eight goals, six, which really that is 14 scoring shots compared to the Dockers 23. So this was a pretty poor game for the Giants. Yes, inaccuracy doesn't matter. Both teams are accurate. But for the Giants, they just were not getting on the scoreboard enough. You can see the Dockers, they were just a better team, and they just pounded them on at the end. It was a close game for pretty much four quarters until this, until midway through the final turn when the Dockers had an attitude change and piled them on to, to really hurt the Giants, who had been close for the entirety of the match. Um, the, the Dockers just went bang, and they kicked one, two, three, four, five, six goals to go on and win the games. If you take back six goals... That's 36 points, and that takes it back to 50, 52. So it was a really interesting game um, here. And and the Dockers, as you showed, they, they can play finals. The Dockers want to play finals, and, and they definitely could have to. If they keep playing like this, they, they could be really hard to beat. Uh, and there was plenty of multiple goal scorers as well for uh, this game. Now we're going to head on to the Sunday game. Essendon 15-13-103 defeat Adelaide 15-9-99 in a very high-scoring, free-flowing game at Marvel Stadium. Now, this one was interesting. Joshua Shelley did win the Rising Star for this round. But, yeah, this this was a really interesting game, of course, for the Crows, who uh, we're going to have to see how they're going to set the tone away from home. And for the Bombers, who are looking to get their first win, and the Bombers most certainly did that. They were up for the pretty much the entirety of the contest. The Crows only led a few times. Um... And they were just a better team, the Bombers. They they probably did play better, exposed the Crows a little bit more. But the Crows, they still put up an effort and they still played pretty well. Uh, but the Bombers, they take it out by four. The Crows, they could have really stolen this game. They kicked it in and um, yeah, no one was there except an Essendon player that, that comes in and marks it. So there are some stat leaders. But it was an, in, it was an interesting game. And why did I just go into Darcy Parish? But it was an interesting game, really interesting game. Uh, but the Bombers, they get their first win of the year. Now, this game was probably one of the games of the round for a big reason. Now, we actually really found out about the Saints today, how hungry they are this year for finals. I, I saw after their performance against um, Collingwood in round one was not their best. Freo in round two was superb. Round three, they came up against um, the Tigers, which was brilliant. And round four was brilliant. So, they're three and one, and they're in a really good position to make the finals this year. The Saints, just like the Blues, they are, they are hungry. They are really looking to play well, and their midfield is going. 73 to 142. It was a massive win for the Saints. They just dominated this game pretty much the whole entire time. Uh, the Hawks got two quick goals in a row, and then the Saints, they stopped the reality. It was pretty close for the first quarter. Second quarter, they got out. Third and fourth quarter was just a blowout. Um, and, yeah, the Hawks were a little bit inaccurate, but, again, inaccuracy didn't really matter in this game. The only thing they would have been able to do was get a little bit closer. But the Saints, they're, they're playing like a real finals team. They're, they're hungry. They're, they're ready to go. So I feel like I feel like they could be making finals this year, the Saints. And, and their hungriness so far is good. Now, obviously, we're only in round, what, round number four, heading into round five. But so far, the Saints, they've turned it up. Now, onto the final game of the round, the upset, which probably no one saw coming, although it was definitely very doable. This upset could have happened to Gold Coast 13 14 92, defeat Carlton 8 14 62. Now, Patrick Cripps did get subbed off, so again, there is troubles there for the Blues, but they're, they're still midfield is still rolling. They've got Kennedy, they've got Chera, they've got Hewitt uh, that can still do it. Uh, and then Walsh as well. 
don't forget him. Um, and first of all, like the Blues, they started well. They had the lead for the first part, the first half of the first quarter, and then from there on, it was just the Suns' demolition. Really, they played so much better. Uh, Miller was ready to go. Shaw was well. Rosas did a good job. And they just, yeah, they piled them on. They did well coming back from there in that first quarter. Uh, second quarter, not really a lot of action going on, um, adding the two goals aside. Uh, and then the third quarter was just where the Suns stamped it. And then the final quarter, again, not too much going on uh, with the Suns um, just doing, getting the job done. And there you go. You can see there Kennedy with the eight tackles Chera. So their midfield does do it as well. They still do get the job done. And Gold Coast having uh, Chong and Rosas getting in with the goals Three apiece, that's pretty good. But again, the Suns, I were just a better team. This was an upset that could have definitely happened, and it did. And the Suns, they're right back on track now. So, quick little recap. Here is the action from the rounds. The Demons got over the Power. The Cats got over the Lions. The Swans got over the Roos. The Eagles defeated the Pies. The, the Tigers got over the Dogs. The Dockers defeated the Giants. The Bombers defeated the Crows. The Saints defeated the Hawks. And the Suns defeated the Blues. What an interesting round it was. Round number five is coming up. Brisbane versus Collingwood, North Melbourne versus Western Bulldogs, West Coast versus Sydney, St Kilda versus Gold Coast, Adelaide versus Richmond, Melbourne versus GWS, Carlton versus Port Adelaide, Essendon versus Fremantle, Hawthorne versus Geelong. Make sure to keep your eyes peeled for the round preview coming tomorrow. Uh, so I'll be previewing this round. I'll be going over my thoughts. I'll be going over my talking edition. Of course, tipping is music, so I don't really get a good chance to talk. So tomorrow... I'll be able to talk to you guys about the upcoming round and the latter. Melbourne, the only team, the 4-0 club, and Port Adelaide, they're 0-4. And every other team has got a win or a loss for the year. So it's just Melbourne and the Power. Melbourne are obviously not looking to get a loss. And the Power, obviously looking to kickstart their season with a win. Uh, but here is the latter. Um, and it's what, what an interesting one it is. Um, but yeah. Anyway, thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. So then you guys will never miss another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. This is Bye everyone. Flaming Footy out.